Here at last is the all-important final step. The formatting process has concluded successfully. So let's go back up to the top here. And basically the only thing that's left to do is to go ahead and configure your services at this point. But before you configure your services, you need to set up a mount point, which is a place where your newly formatted RAID volume will be mounted so that the system can see it and make use of it. So we go under Disks, Mount Point, and we click the plus sign here. Our type is a disk. We must choose one. We'll choose the video RAID that we made. It is a GPT partition. That is very important. If you get the type of partition wrong, you'll have a problem. The Mount Point, its name doesn't have to be too fancy. You notice I've kind of run on a theme here. I guess I'll call it video like I have every other point. And again, I can enter a little description here, just something simple. And I know it's terrible. I'm not typing this on a Model M because I haven't felt like I could be bothered to bring one up here yet. Anyway, generally a lot of these other options don't require any changing unless you're doing something special with your permissions and such. You can set the volume to be read-only so that no one can write to it, which might be handy if you are creating an archive from a set of disks that already had data stored on them. You can also specify whether or not you want a file system check to take place when the system starts up. This is usually not a bad idea. If something's wrong with your file system, especially on a Unix-based system, or more accurately a BSD Unix-based system such as this, you want to find out about it and fix it before it causes major damage and potential data loss. Although sometimes it's fair to say that the Unix disk repair tools like FSCK for file system check, commonly jokingly used as an expletive in geek circles, sometimes it's fair to say that those things are uh, blunt force instruments. That is to say that they value correctness of the file system over the user's data. So sometimes if something goes sufficiently wrong, it can be bad news for your data anyway, if you try to repair the file system. Anyway, I'll go ahead and apply the changes here. It'll think about it for a moment. And again, if everything goes well, the computer should come back in just a moment and tell us that the status over here is OK. That basically means we've completed every step that is required to get your new volume set up as a RAID formatted, mounted, and prepped for use with services. Now services are one thing I'm only going to talk about here briefly because everybody's needs are different. I have tried a couple of different network attached storage appliance operating systems and products. I've paid the most attention so far to FreeNAS and OpenFiler. And really at least so far in terms of services that ship with the product there is no comparison. FreeNAS offers quite a few more and one in particular that I find quite valuable is the AFP service or Apple Filing Protocol. Now a modern Apple computer really doesn't care, you know, as long as you're running Mac OS 10 or later, you know, not that there is a later yet, but maybe by the time you're watching this video there will be. But if you're running my if you're running Apple's Mac OS 10 operating system, you can use almost any different kind of sharing methodology. You can use Windows file sharing. I think you can even use NFS exports. You can use FTP. I mean, you can use all kinds of things, no problem. But sometimes it's nice just to be able to do things the Apple way, especially if you're like me and have some Mac OS 9 machines on your network that maybe someday would access this resource, although it's pretty unlikely. And so FreeNAS includes an Apple filing protocol module that is very nice to have. It's also equally at home talking to Windows machines. That's what the CIFS, Common Internet Filing System, server message block is for. But it's up to you what services you want to configure. And basically, although configuring the services is beyond the scope of this little set of videos that I'm making, because you'll have your own needs and there's people can tell you better about this than I can, you'll need to create some users. That's done under the Access tab, under Users and Groups. And you'll need to set up your services, which is done under the services menu here, and it flies out, of course, to show you everything. And of course, if you click the very top of it here, as I have done, 
you get to see at a glance what the status of your services really is. But there you go. That so far is the process of my building a free NAS based system out of a Dell Dimension 8100 with a software RAID 1 volume set to store all my YouTube videos. And so the next things that I'm going to do I will set up some sharing services because I edit videos on both Windows and Mac. I will set up AFP and SMB sharing. I will add a user for these things. The Keykeeper has expressed an interest in uh, storing his videos on this thing, so I'll add him as a user on the system and set him up however he wants to be set up. And then, once I've tested this thing out, which is important, I'm going to write some nonsense data to this thing and just make sure again that it's reliable, that it can be depended upon to do the job. So there you have it, a kind of whirlwind tour to setting up a RAID 1 volume under FreeNAS from hardware to software and almost to finished. Thank you for watching all these parts and if you have a comment or question please feel free to send it to me.